As glaciers disappear, groundwater dries up, and Earth's climate gets more and more extreme, where will we get our drinking water? What about from this gigantic reservoir that holds 97% of Earth's water? Ocean water can be more than 60 times saltier than fresh water, which means it's undrinkable. That salt is mostly table salt, sodium chloride. Sodium ions are positively charged and attracted to negatively charged chloride ions. Water is polar, meaning it's positively charged on one end and negatively charged on the other. Those deltas represent partial charges. This allows it to break sodium chloride crystals apart and then surround each ion, forming ion-dipole bonds. And that's why it dissolves sodium chloride so well. These bonds are so strong that it takes a lot of energy to pry the water and the ions apart from each other. Today, the most widely used large-scale way to create fresh water from seawater is by reverse osmosis. Unlike osmosis, where fresh water would, on its own, rush toward a solution with a higher salt concentration, like seawater, reverse osmosis takes human intervention. Water from the ocean is pushed through membranes, keeping out salt ions, but allowing water molecules to pass through. Here's a reverse osmosis desalination plant in San Diego County. This facility is North America's largest effort to turn seawater into fresh water. Every day they pump in 100 million gallons of seawater, and after desalination, they can pump 50 million gallons of fresh water into the city, reaching about 300,000 people. Okay, so at this point you might be thinking, wait a sec, why are we talking about reverse osmosis? I know how to get fresh water from the ocean, just boil it and then collect the steam. That's called distillation, and yeah, it is a way to both purify and desalinate water. You can heat seawater using fossil fuels or the sun until the water molecules begin to evaporate. As the water vapor rises and comes in contact with a cool surface, it condenses, and what's collected is fresh water, leaving salts and other minerals behind. So why don't we just distill the ocean whenever we need some fresh water? Well, the energy to separate water from salt has to come from somewhere. And it turns out it takes less energy to do reverse osmosis on millions of gallons of water per day than to boil millions of gallons of water per day. Hydrogen atoms in water molecules are not only covalently bonded to their oxygen, they're also attracted to the oxygens in other water molecules. That's a lot of attraction and a lot of bonding. So when you boil water and vaporize those water molecules, you're using a lot of energy to break those interactions. When you're just forcing water through a membrane, you don't have to worry about any of that. So understandably, reverse osmosis is the method of choice for bringing water to lots of people. In an ideal world, Elon Musk would whip up a solar array powerful and reliable enough to make reverse osmosis plants the method of choice for coastal areas, but we're just not good enough yet at harnessing the sun's energy. People are working on it though. Maybe just not Elon. Honestly, who knows where that guy's at? Elon, are you listening? But the sun can be useful if you're stranded on a desert island and happen to have one of these cute little stills. Oh, look at this little guy. But say Elon succeeds and we do have a money-saving, zero emissions desalination plant on our hands. That still leaves out one very important part of the equation, leftover salt. So when we remove all that salt, where do we put it? One option is back to the ocean. But if it isn't spread out across a large area, it can be really bad for marine life. Super salty water is denser than your typical ocean water. So as it sinks, it can negatively affect creatures on the ocean floor who are sensitive to changes in salinity. One option, although used less often because it requires more work and equipment, is to harvest the remaining salt and sell it. So at the end of the day, yes, we have so much seawater that we never fear running out of it. And that's a huge plus. But the reality is that it often takes a lot of energy and money, and in most places, there are still other ways of getting fresh water. For now. <laughs>